Welcome folks to the world of MS-DOS, the operating system that launched a thousand command prompts and made us all feel like tech wizards. Today we're taking a trip down memory lane to explore the history and legacy of this beloved operating system and to see just how far we've come from those black and white screens and clunky keyboards. So sit back, grab your mouse, just kidding, we won't be needing that and get ready for a journey through the world of MS-DOS games in all its retro glory. So let's do this. Well, 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 how many MS-DOS games were released? I hear you ask. Now that's a question that's bound to make any retro gamer's heart skip a beat. While it's tough to nail down an exact number, we're talking about thousands upon thousands of games here, people. MS-DOS was the king of the hill when it came to gaming platforms in the 80s and 90s and all the big hitters made their debut on this operating system. I'm talking Doom, Prince of Persia, Lemmings, the list goes on and on. The sheer volume of games that were released for MS-DOS is a testament to its lasting popularity and influence. And it's no wonder that many of these classic titles are still beloved by gamers today. So if you're a fan of retro gaming, MS-DOS is definitely a platform you can't afford to miss out on. So MS-DOS, the operating system that launched a thousand trivia questions. <laughs> Did you know, for instance, that MS-DOS was originally developed for IBM in the early 1980s and was based on an earlier operating system called QDOS, Quick and Dirty Operating System, <laughs> which Microsoft actually bought from Seattle Computer Company for 50,000 US dollars. Or how about this one? The DIR command, which is still used in modern Windows operating systems, was actually first introduced in MS-DOS version 2.0 in 1983. And if you are a fan of Easter eggs, you might be interested to know that if you type win at the MS-DOS prompt, you'll get a little message that says Windows will now start. Of course, that was back when starting Windows was a novelty, not a daily occurrence. MS-DOS may be an operating system of the past, but its legacy lives on. And there's always something new to discover about this pioneering platform. Now, ladies and gentlemen, gather round, but we're about to delve into the rich and storied history of MS-DOS and its impact on the world of gaming. Now, it's no exaggeration to say that MS-DOS revolutionized gaming as we know it. In the 1980s and 1990s, when MS-DOS was the dominant operating system, it became the go-to platform for game developers. Thanks to its speed, flexibility, and ease of use, MS-DOS allowed game developers to create games with stunning graphics and sound, paving the way for classics such as Doom, Wolfenstein 3D, and Lemmings. MS-DOS also supported a wide range of input devices, including mice, joysticks, game pads, giving gamers more control and precision than ever before. But perhaps MS-DOS's most significant contribution to gaming was its open architecture, which allowed developers to create and distribute their own games without having to go through a central authority. This led to the emergence of a thriving indie gaming scene, with small teams creating innovative and unique games that challenged the conventions of mainstream gaming. In short, MS-DOS did a lot for gaming. It gave developers the tools they needed to create immersive, cutting-edge games, and it fostered a culture of creativity and experimentation that continues to influence gaming development to this day. So the next time you fire up your favorite game, take a moment to appreciate the role that MS-DOS played in making it all possible. Ah, the history of MS-DOS. I love it personally. It's a tale as old as time itself. Well, not quite, but it certainly goes back a few decades. Let me take you on that journey through the annals of computing history. So as I mentioned before, in the early 1980s, when IBM was developing its first personal computer, they needed an operating system to run on it. So they reached out to a small software company called Microsoft. Microsoft was still in its infancy at the time, but they jumped at the chance to work with IBM. The result of this partnership was MS-DOS, which was released in 1981 at first. It was a relatively basic operating system, 
but it quickly gained popularity among IBM PC users. And when IBM released its second personal computer, the PC XT, they chose MS-DOS as the default operating system. This catapulted Microsoft to even greater heights of popularity and it soon became the de facto standard for PC operating systems. Microsoft continued to develop and improve MS-DOS over the years, adding features like support for hard drives, networking and lots more. But perhaps the most significant moment in MS-DOS history came in 1985 when Microsoft released Windows 1.0. This was the first graphical user interface for MS-DOS and it paved the way for development of modern operating systems like Windows 10. Of course MS-DOS didn't fade into obscurity overnight. It remained a popular operating system well into the 1990s and it continued to be used for gaming and other applications even after the rise of Windows. But sadly eventually MS-DOS did fall out of favour and it was replaced by newer, more advanced operating systems. Today, it's a relic of a bygone era, but its legacy lives on in the world of retro computing and gaming. So me personally, I think the history of MS-DOS is a fascinating tale of innovation, collaboration, and the power of simplicity. And who knows, maybe in another few decades, people will be looking back on Windows 10 with the same kind of fondness that we feel for MS-DOS today, but I severely doubt it. But what about MS-DOS today? Now there's a topic that might surprise some of you. After all, we're talking about an operating system that's been out of mainstream use for decades. But believe it or not, MS-DOS still has a role to play in the world of computing. So for starters, MS-DOS is still used by some die-hard retro gamers and computer enthusiasts. There's even online communities dedicated to preserving and celebrating MS-DOS and the games that were developed for it. But beyond the world of retro computing, MS-DOS still has some practical applications. For example, some embedded systems still use MS-DOS as their operating system. And because MS-DOS is a simple, lightweight operating system, it can be useful in situations where other more complex operating systems might not be appropriate. But perhaps the most interesting thing about MS-DOS today is the way it has inspired modern computing. MS-DOS was a pioneer in many ways, and its legacy can be seen in everything from the command line interface of modern operating systems to the games and software that we use today. In a way, MS-DOS paved the way for the modern computing landscape that we take for granted. So without MS-DOS, we might not have Windows, Mac OS, or the countless other operating systems that we use today. Now I know life all started out with Unix and the GUI Xerox. Even though MS-DOS might not be in a widespread use anymore, its impact on the world of computing is still being felt today. So there you have it folks, MS-DOS might be a relic of the past, but it still has a place in the modern computing world. And who knows, maybe one day we'll see a resurgence of MS-DOS as a retro computing enthusiast and new generation of users discover the joys of this pioneering operating system. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If so, please like, I'm desperately trying to get to 5,000 subscribers. Please ring that bell for notifications of future videos. If you really, really like this video, please give us a big thanks. Oh, and don't forget to leave us a comment. And I'd be eternally grateful if you could share with other like-minded people. I'd like to thank SUS Go Art for the bezel, Arcade Punks and Arcade Source for other resources and until next time